St. Phillips, St. Phillips, hello again. It is Good Friday, Good Friday, one of the high holy days of our whole Christian year. And uh, so I hope you are all uh, kind of at home and safe and well and um, able to kind of live through this um, this somber day, which comes at a, at a somber time, right? Um, I do hope you got a chance to see Monday, Thursday uh, worship last night and to worship along with us. Um, that, of course, uh, if you didn't get a chance last night, you can still pick it up uh, on our website uh, under videos. If you go to media and videos, it's all under there. Um, so you can pick it up there or you can pick it up uh, on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page and check that out. Um, also tonight uh, at 7 o'clock, um, we'll have worship that will go online at seven o'clock. Um, so that is our service of dark darkness. So uh, you'll, you'll be able to get a feel in worship for uh, kind of things uh, getting darker as we get closer to the end of, uh, of Jesus's time on the cross. Um, and then on uh, Sunday morning, uh, worship will be posted online uh, at uh, 8 a.m., just a couple minutes before 8 a.m. like we've been doing. And that'll be our uh, resurrection service. So um, we'll have uh, Easter lilies in there. So it'll smell like Easter lilies. You can see if that comes through on the video or not. Uh, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful sight uh, to see them no matter what. Um, so I hope you can join us uh, for worship both tonight and on Sunday morning. You can check out last night's service as well, um, online as well. Uh, and of course, if you need me, uh, I'm here all the time. Uh, you can call, leave a message here at church or on my cell phone. Either way, the messages will get to me one way or another. So uh, why don't we uh, do our final devotion for this Lenten season, final one out of this book. So as we continue our time and our videos, we're going to figure out a different way to go. So uh, already working on that. We're going to continue this uh, even beyond now. So uh, we'll find a way to, to uh, continue to talk and continue to reflect and continue to think about how our faith really uh, helps us, especially in this time. So um, so this is the final devotion in this book. It's for Good Friday. And of course, it's Matthew 27, the end of it. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. You make it as secure as you can. And this is uh, to ponder first. Um, what wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. We know this hymn, right? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul? So the reflection today is entitled, What Wondrous Love Is This? The last deception would be worse than the first. In the minds of the chief priests and the Pharisees, just what is the first deception? That Jesus was able to rally a following? Are they jealous of Jesus' popularity? Do they fear a possible uprising? Or are the chief priests, Pharisees, Pilate, and all the people who surround Jesus unable to come to terms with his wondrous love? Political leaders tend to rely on power, maneuvering, political clout. In their minds, Jesus, the fir Jesus' first deception might be love wins. But as the chief priests and Pharisees continue to plan and plot, we are just one resurrected breath away from the truth. Fast forward 2,000 years, many people still rely on power and political clout to make their way in the world. It is up to the baptized community of the crucified one to both carry and live his message that love wins. 
What wondrous love is this, O my soul? It is the wondrous love of Jesus who is slumbering in the tomb and who is about to come to life forever. Uh, a line out of that reflection uh, really jumped out at me today. Um, it says this, it, it, I'll read it again. It says, it's up to the baptized community of the crucified one to both carry and to live his message that love wins. Uh, that really jumped out at me when I read this earlier this morning. Um, I, we got a card and we've been getting a lot of things in the mail, a lot of people sending in offerings, but a lot of people also sending in cards uh, to me and to Lisa, because uh, we're kind of here alone right now. Uh, so uh, just kind of letting us know that uh, they, they love us, they miss us. Um, but I got a card today, this morning. Uh, mail's been coming really early in the morning. And um, it was from one of our older members, one of our oldest members, in fact, um, who was just expressing how hard it is for him um, to be living through this time at such a late age that he feels very much like a prisoner in his home. His kids are around, but he's old enough that they are a little wary about going to visit him. They do, but they're wary about it. And so he just feels very much like a prisoner. And he reflected on the days that he gets to come to worship and how much it means to see the people and to be a part of a community, one that is itself getting younger here uh, as more people are joining. Or maybe it's that he's getting older, I don't know. Um, but that nonetheless, it becomes the place where he experiences love and grace and life. And I think that's probably true, not only for him, that he feels a little bit like a prisoner. I think he feels a little bit like that for all of us. I know this gentleman in his, um, in his uh, card to me, uh, kind of expressed how he really hopes that given his age, that there will be a day when he can get back to his St. Philip's family again. But he's worrying that the days are growing few. And I'm reminded of that line out of this reflection again today. It's up to the baptized community of the crucified one to both carry and live his message that love wins. How are we doing that in this time? How would we bring it to this gentleman that love wins? That as much as he feels like a prisoner, that the love that he experiences when he's here exists not just when he's here, but when he's trapped in his home as well. What can we do? What note can we send him? What phone call can we give him? What little gift could we drop on his porch for him to have? hang on his doorknob? What expression could we do for him? What can we do for one another? And I think that's really important in this time. We have a role in this time, and it's not just to be comforted by God's word. It's not just to hear me do a devotion and to, to be like, okay, that really helped me. It's to say that really helped me because I heard about God's love for me but then we're moved by the same thing we were moved by last night at our Monday Thursday service, the mandatum, right? The commandment to love one another as we've been loved. What are we doing to be the church even when we're not here? And it's not just during this time, it's all the time, but it's especially during this time because so many people are feeling like prisoners who are feeling like they can't get out, who are feeling cut off, or who are feeling just anxious and depressed, like life isn't the same. How are we as the baptized community proclaiming the truth, that first deception that those in power didn't like with Jesus, the first deception that the wondrous love of Christ wins, not just for you and me, but it wins because it changes us and sends us out into the world 
to be love and to be grace, to be the witness that love does win in the world. So let us pray. Gracious, merciful, living God, we offer you our thanks and praise for the greatest love the world has ever seen or known. Help us to bring your wondrous love into the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed remainder of your Holy Week and that you join us for worship not just tonight, but on Easter Sunday when we become witnesses to the empty tomb. Blessings and peace. Enjoy your day. I'll see you all soon.